here to the channel. I'm Reverend Valerie Love. Let me fix this for us. Let me fix this. And here we talk all about uh, magic and metaphysics, money and spirituality, and living the inspired life. I get to leave retreats all over the globe. I'm Reverend Valerie Love, also known as Kaizi, the author of 25 books on practical spirituality. And you can catch up with all of it at ValerieLove.com. Now, today, We've been having a conversation. Matter of fact, let me put in my earphones because I think that'll give us a better sound quality. One moment. Let's do earphones because the sound's going to be better. How you loving, family? How you loving? I can't have seven words for you. We're going we gonna to look at these seven words from the Bible because the Bible is not what they told us. Um, uh, the real God is not in the Bible at all. And the Bible is not a spiritual book at all. And the Bible is not a book about God at all. All right, let's get into it. Okay. Tell me if the sound is good. And then we're going to get into it. I have notes for you. I have notes for you. Tell me if the sound is good. My mic sounds nice. Tell me if my sound is good. Come on in, come on in. How you loving, how you loving? How you loving? Valor Love here at your service. Normally, this live stream happens at 4 p.m. Eastern time. This is day 39. Tomorrow is the final day, day 40 of our um, challenge. We're in a 40 day challenge. Sounds is great. Yay, 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 yay. Mwah. So we're continuing with our radical conversation, radical conversation about the Bible, that the Bible is not about God at all, that the Bible is not a spiritual book at all, and that the real God is not in the Bible at all. This is so shocking. It is so shocking. And it is shocking also to know that we have been lied to by Christianity for thousands of years. And in Indeed, all of the Abrahamic religions are based on faulty premises that can now be proven by archaeology, science, and studying the ancient texts. So, here are seven words that I want you to look up from the Bible, okay? Here are the seven words. First, I'm going to give you the seven words. Write them down because we are those who study. We love to research, right? We love to learn. We love to grow. We love to know what we're talking about. And I love receipts, you know, like Billy Carson said, you know, I always come with the receipts. I'm like, that's right, Billy Carson, because you got to come with receipts with these people out here in these streets, right? So here are the seven words. And then I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you the seven words first in the original Hebrew. Then I'm going to give you the seven words as it's normally translated in our Bibles. Then I'm going to give you the true meaning of these seven words. Are we ready? Here's the first word, Elohim. We talked about that at length here on the channel. The second word is Yahweh. We've talked about that one quite a bit. The third word is Elion. The fourth word is El Shaddai. If I'm going too fast, rewind. The fifth word is Ruach which we talked about yesterday. No, yesterday we talked about the sixth word. The sixth word is kavod. We talked about kavod yesterday. And the seventh word is olam. Now let's talk about these seven words because these seven words by themselves blow the whole lid off the entire Bible of being a spiritual book at all. So let's talk about what normally happens with these seven words and what we're gonna do instead with the seven words. Normally the word Elohim from the original Hebrew, the Masoretic text of the Hebrew Bible. Remember the Hebrew Bible, we don't have the originals. We don't have copies of the originals. We don't have copies of the copies of the originals. So no one has the original Bible, it's non-existent. We have copies of copies of copies of copies of copies of copies of copies, of copies okay? <clears throat> In the original Hebrew, the word Elohim is translated God, singular. Even though it's a plural word, in our Bibles, the word Yahweh is translated Lord or Eternal One. That's not true. In our Bibles also, the word Elion, the word Elion in the original Hebrew is translated Most High. That's not true either. I'll tell you in a moment what they mean. The fourth word, El Shaddai, 
When that word is translated, it is translated as almighty God. That's not true either. The fifth word, ruach, is translated spirit. That's not true. Uh, that these are not true pronounce uh, true translations these are translations based on an agenda the sixth word kavod is translated glory we talked about kavod yesterday the seventh word olam is mistranslated and i should have really be saying mistranslated rather than translated it's mistranslated eternity so let's talk about it this first word elohim what is it really? So Elohim is translated in our Bible as God. What is it really? It's really God's. The word Yahweh is translated in our Bible, eternal one or Lord. And really it is not. It is simply one of the Elohim. Later on, who over time morphed into one of the 70 sons of El in the Canaanite pantheon. The word Elion has an actual different root than Elohim. Elion, E-L-Y-O-N, is translated most high. Elion doesn't mean that. Elion means the one that is higher than the others. It doesn't mean most high. It means the one who's higher than these. That still doesn't sound like God to me because God the infinite source is beyond all, not just some. The word ruach, we've already talked about it. That word is translated as spirit. And what it actually means is a, a wind could be anywhere from a to a great rushing wind to a whole tornado. It is a wind and it could even be some kind of instrument that is wind causing. A kavod Kavod has been translated as glory, the glory of God. Kavod actually means a big heavy thing. And in uh, some Hebrew Bibles, they even say that it is metal. And some Hebrew Bibles also say that it is armaments and that it's dangerous. So here again, we get to the ancient aliens experience where these are much, much older stories that the Bible is borrowing and keeping for us for posterity. That's why I love the Bible, because the Bible is keeping these stories safe for all of us. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been running around reading the ancient Sumerian text more than likely. And the seventh word, olam, which is mistranslated as eternity. Olam doesn't mean eternity. It means unknown. Uh, it could be from an unknown place or an unknown time period. It just means something that is not known. It does not mean eternity. How you loving? How you loving? How you loving? A rubber day, Cheryl, Coach Cheryl. How you loving? How you loving? So I'm saying, why am I saying all these things? Why am I telling you all of this about the Bible? It changes everything, family. It changes everything. It changes everything about our roots. It changes everything that we know about human uh, biology and evolution. It changes our relationship with the divine, with the cosmos. It changes our relationships with ourselves and each other. It causes us probably to stop fighting each other because what we come to understand when we read all of the ancient texts is that we all have a common ancestor. So we need to stop fighting each other, period, period. Because it's not about where the Egyptians better than the Sumerians and the Egyptians, the ancient Kemites were black and so they were a superior race. And it's not about that. It's about us, the all. We're all in this together. And we ought not to be fighting each other like they're doing right now in the Middle East over fake gods. These original ancient aliens that came here, they weren't gods. They were advanced. Now there is one scholar who calls it A, B, C, and D civilizations. An A civilization like the ones who came here, they were probably A civilization or B civilization. An A civilization has the ability to control their environment in an extremely advanced civilization. 
and an A civilization can live independent of their sun. A B civilization cannot live independent of their sun, yet that they are extremely advanced and they can control their environment. A C civilization is what they call us. We are a C civilization because we cannot control our environment and we also cannot um, prepare for the day when our sun will die, which it will. And it also uh, means that we don't really have a whole lot of advanced technologies compared to some of the other beings in the universe. And a D civilization is one that actually destroys its environment, which could be us as well. So we're somewhere in C and D, which means that there's a lot of entities all over this great, big, huge universe that could be far more advanced than us. It could be a lot of them, not just the ones who came here. And my sense is that there is a galactic federation is spoken of in the book of Job. The book of Job said that there is a sky council and in Job 82, was it? No, 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 not Job. Job speaks of it too. Psalm 82. In Psalm 82, you can look it up. It talks about, uh, well, of course, Job talks about it because it was the day when the sons of El came to take their place before God. And it was like a whole, it was a council. Yet the way we were told it in Christianity, we were told that, um, this is all the angels coming to see God. And then Satan, meaning adversary, he took his place among them, right? Then in the book of Psalms, we also have that there is a sky council and God is speaking among the gods. There we have plural again. So when we go to Moro Bellino, Okay, Mauro Bellino, look him up, Mauro, M-A-U-R-O, Bellino. He used to work for a press where they were translating the ancient Hebrew Bible for under Vatican approval. And he worked for them for many, many, many years. And then his findings after digging deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into the original Hebrew text and alerting them that it is not saying the things that we have been told, he of course fell out with the church and the church got rid of him. Obviously, Catholic church, right? Because the Catholic church, even the Pope, let me think of which Pope, whether it was, it was it Pope Benedict, one of the popes sent out a papal bull that says, Christians should not be using the word Yahweh for God in their liturgy and their worship and their prayers because Yahweh is not a Christian name for God. What does that mean? That's a papal bull. One of the popes issued that and a conservative pope at that issue look it up it's all online it's just in any of this we can easily read it and any of the things that you want to read that you want to see whether what you believe is true or not is jesus savior of humanity no is jesus coming back a second coming no was jesus born of a virgin no uh, did jesus rise from the dead and people see him no uh, did, it, it, wasn't there a man and a woman in the serpent, uh, and a serpent spoke to a woman in the Garden of Eden? No. These things are metaphors. And if we go to the ancient understanding of these metaphors, we will understand that Mithras and Apollo are very much like Christ. They look very much like Christ. There's a God who somehow impregnates a woman. This is a recurring trope in pantheons all over the world, especially through the, throughout the Greco-Roman Greco -Roman world where the New Testament was written. Yet what is happening is that Christians have been so hoodwinked, so brainwashed, into this circular argument. What is the circular argument? The Bible says it's true, so therefore it is. Oh my gosh. What can you do with that? What can you do with that? The Bible is the word of God. How do you know? Because it says so. What are you gonna do with that?
Okay, thanks. You're not going to be able to have that kind of conversation with a person who's still there because this is a person who is not open to thinking about anything other than what they have been taught and that there's really not going to be any way for them to come out of it until they themselves choose to come out of it, right? That's all. And for us who want to know and who study the ancient texts and read what scholars say and do our research and fact check the church, we come to find out that the things that they told us just were not true and then you have a decision. Some people stayed in church. They didn't leave. Some people became atheists. Some people um, went to African spirituality and said, fuck Christianity, it's a bullshit story. I get all of it. I get all of it. I did not turn my back on the Christian story because I love the Christian story because there are threads of metaphor, symbology, and usefulness for me and my own personal life that I absolutely love. So that's why I have my Bible collection. I still have my Bible collection as a witch, as a person who practices the su supernatural arts, magical arts and sciences. I love my Bible. I love my Bible. I love the chat. The chat is going. Jesus is God. Wow. See what I mean? We have it right here in the chat. But it's okay, you know, everyone's free to think whatever they want to think. Everyone is free to think whatever they want to think. Yep, that's how the world works. Okay, so uh, I'll give you these seven words again. And you know, by all means, make your own independent research. And remember, when you research these words, if you ask a Bible scholar, who is a religious Bible scholar, they're gonna give you the party line. They're gonna give you the same party line. They're not gonna give you anything outside of, oh no, Elohim means God. Why is it plural? Oh, because that means the Trinity. They are not gonna, even the AI is somewhat bamboozled because if you ask the AI about these things, the AI gives you the party line as well. You've got to study and go so deep. You've got to go so deep, family, and you've got to go on your own hero's quest to really search for the truth. I promise you it's not in any church. I promise you it is not in any church at all. What's interesting to me is that if the story attached to Jesus is real, then he too was an alien of some type. Hello, could be. Hello. Now, here's what I found very interesting about Jesus and his very first miracle. Tell me what this sounds like. There was a, now I've been to Greece, I've been to Egypt, I've been to the ancient sites in Greece, I've been to the ancient sites in Egypt, I've been to several ancient sites in Mexico, Teotihuacan, Temple of the Sun, Temple of the Pyramid of the Sun, Pyramid of the Moon, um, I've been to Uxmal, ancient ancient city here in the Yucatan where I have a home base. I've been to Chichen Itza where they have astronomical precision with a pyramid that is built on the same uh, premise as the Great Pyramids of Egypt. I've been to the Great Pyramids of Egypt more than once. Um, there are actually nine pyramids on the Giza Plateau. Three you see usually and they tell you that these three were built as tombs from Menkare, Khufu, and uh, Khafre. That's what they say. It's not so, not so. And you know that it's not so because when you look at the nine pyramids on the Giza Plateau, if you've been to Egypt and you look at the nine pyramids on the Giza Plateau, see, I go and look at things for myself because I don't want people to tell me what is what. I'm going to go find out for myself and you can certainly join us if you desire to come with us when we go back to Egypt again in 2025 for the fall equinox. You can certainly join us. Uh, this is what I discovered. There are six pyramids and they're smaller, much smaller than the three great pyramids of Giza. They're all falling down. They were built by humans. You can clearly see the distinction. I asked everyone who was on tour with us. 
Look at these six pyramids and look at these three pyramids. What is the difference? The distinction is so vast, it is incontrovertible that humans did not build the three pyramids of the Giza Plateau with the mathematical precision with it aligned with the Pleiades. It's a perfect alignment with the Pleiades. These people who built the pyramids of Egypt were from the Pleiades, as were, if you look at the uh, Teotihuacan city, it's a whole huge ancient city. I was there, I walked the whole thing from one end to the other. My mouth was hanging wide open. If you go to the city of Teotihuacan, the ancient city of Teotihuacan, outside of Mexico City, it looks like a motherboard. The shape of it, pull up a picture. It looks like a circuit board that goes in a computer. It is insane. Like they had advanced technology. And they have advanced technology. That's how it is that they're able to zip around us here. And sometimes we can see them and sometimes we can't because they're going so super fast. They're going way faster than the speed of anything that we can accommodate with our current technology and I believe we'll get there we're getting smarter and smarter we'll get there yet they already had genetic testing down pat just we're just now getting around to the genetic testing that they already had when they first came here 450,000 years ago okay yeah no human man built Jordan either mm, no way at all look at that see when you look at these and you go to Turkey I've been in Turkey if you look at Gobekli Tepe if you look at um, if you look at the 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 pure the the ruins in Peru they are built on the same hey Joshua buddy the boy dance buddy the boy dance yay love you thank you thank you thank you they are built in Peru which I've been to Peru also see I don't go by what people tell me I'm going to go see for myself. And I would offer that you do the same. And that when I went to see these, these structures in Peru also, they have this same telltale mark of being these astronomical monolithic structures aligned to star systems, super advanced. And we don't even know how they were built to this day. They have tried to recreate building the great pyramids of Giza and we still cannot figure it out. They tried to recreate it in Japan and they said the Because do you understand that the, the pyramid in Giza, the great pyramid of Giza is two million blocks and each block weighs tons? I don't think people understand how big those pyramids are. There's millions of blocks in one pyramid. And they try to tell us slaves did it. You know, they make all those little pictures of like a little wooden plank and slaves, but except the blocks that they're made from are quarried from much further down the Nile River in Egypt and guess what? You can't ride the whole Nile River in Egypt because the Nile River in Egypt has five cataracts. It has cataracts where it turns abruptly and there's rocks. You can't get a ship. No one can take a ship straight all the way up and down the, the, um, the, the Nile River. No one can do that. You cannot take a ship from one end of the Nile River to the other like you can, like the Mississippi River, you can do that. No, 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 no. The, and actually the cataracts are so extreme that it would tear a ship to shreds. So how did these people, so they didn't put them on a boat. So they quarried these stones from far away and they're telling us that they carried these stones on some, it couldn't have been a ship, couldn't have come on water. What I sense, what my sense is, that they had sound technology. Because if you notice, sound is vibration. If you make something, it, sound can lift something. Now we know that. You, you put something loud on, you turn a speaker all the way up and you put something on top of it, it jumps with the sound. 
So these people, and, and we ourselves are starting to master sound technology. Things, all of these things are just technologies that we haven't discovered yet, and we're smart, we'll discover them. So we needn't be in awe of these beings as if they were gods when they were not. Only the infinite source that's not in any book, I can promise you that, is the real source. And the infinite source is not in the Bible. The Bible was never meant to be a spiritual book. In the redaction of the Bible in the sixth century BCE is when they went and put a gloss on the Bible and made it Yahweh and Jehovah and made it where you you know it's spiritual and it's we got to worship and you got to get your mind right and yourself right with God and God made a covenant with you and all that kind of stuff. They put that in later. This was simply a book that was retelling the tales that they kept re Okay, I'm gonna give you an example. In, Mes in Mesopotamia, let's go to Sumeria. In Sumeria, ancient Sumer, the way that a scribe learned their craft was that they had to write the ancient stories. They had to write the story of Adamu and Eva in a garden in the east called Edan. We thought the Bible came up with that. No, it didn't. The Bible got that from a much older source. That's how the scribed, scribes learned their craft. They had to copy the old stories. It's almost like when we were kids, and we were given, run, Jane, run. See, Jane, run. Run, Dick, run. Dick and Jane, run. Spot is their dog. Remember, we had to write all that stuff while well, I'm ancient. Maybe y'all didn't have to write that stuff when you were in school. But remember, when we were in school, they made us practice certain stories for writing. The same with the scribes. They made you practice writing. And what did they practice writing? The ancient stories of Adamu, uh, the, the flood legend, Atrahasis, Epic of Atrahasis, Atrahasis, who is also another name for Noah. Another name for him is Utnapishtim. It, this dude, it's a recurring story and it is based on truth that there was really a flood and there was really a man who had a few people there and there was really one of these advanced beings who told him the being wasn't God and it wasn't that God was bringing the flood because the people were evil, that no, that is not the infinite source and that is not how the infinite source of the cosmos consciousness conducts itself. The infinite consciousness of this entire cosmos is love and it does not kill people. We came up with killing people because these beings that came here some were violent and some were not, just like us as humans. Some are violent and some are not. So I'm going to end with this. Let's go to Jesus. And I was going to say this earlier in the conversation. Do you remember Jesus' first um, miracle? Okay, maybe a thousand years from now, the quick Braille Fox jumped over Lazy Dog will be part of a religious text as we say right now since <laughs> They're gonna they're gonna add it to the Bible. They're gonna say it must have been valuable to these people because they kept writing it over and over. We keep finding all these notebooks and it was written. <laughs> we were just practicing writing. <laughs> but they won't know what we were doing, right? Okay, let's go to Jesus. You remember Jesus' first miracle. I was going to say this earlier. Tell me if this sounds familiar. What was Jesus' first miracle? His first miracle was that he was at a wedding in Cana. We know the story. They were running out of wine. And they, Jesus' mother came to him. What are we going to do? He's like, listen, woman, don't bug me. You know, I used to say a lot of enigmatic things to people around him. And, they were, and she was like, just leave him alone. She told the wine people at the at that were hosting the the wedding feast whatever he tells you to do just do it and then he says okay bring me one of these jugs and he turns the water into wine everybody remember that right was that original no 
Why? Because if you read the myths and legends of Dionysus, I mean, we were in Greece. I love Greece. I've been to the Greek islands. I've been to Athens. Dionysus is everywhere. Dionysus is the god of wine, mirth, partying, festivals. So Dionysus came as just a regular person. They didn't know that he was a god in one of his stories. He came to a house of a man who was somewhat poor, not a family that wasn't very well off. And he was there with the people at the party. And then what did Dionysus do? He turned the water to wine in the story. Dionysus, this is before Jesus, turned the water into wine and everybody's drinking the water, wine and they're all happy. These stories in the Bible are not original. Now, I love that because it's keeping the ancient mysteries alive. The Bible is delivering to us Sumerian mythology, Akkadian, Babylonian, Zoroastrian, Egyptian. I mean, there's a whole psalm in the Bible written by a pharaoh himself, a song to the Aten, at least the Catholic Bible, they are honest and transparent and say Psalm 104 was written by the pharaoh Akhenaten. And it is a song to the Aten. It's in your Bible. It ain't talking about God. It's talking about his concept of God. So I love the Bible because it's showing us Greco-Roman Greco -Roman mythology. It's showing us Dionysus. Dionysus is in the Bible. So when you read Jesus turning water into wine, we're, we're reading about Dionysus. When you're reading about Jonah being in the belly of the whale, you're reading about Apollo. And the people who were writing this and reading this at the time, it would have been normal for them. They all knew how the myths work. Here we are 2,000 years later, confused, thinking that it's talking about the real God of the universe when it's not. Okay, I don't want to beat a dead horse in this conversation. We're going to end this conversation with this. I'll be back at you tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern time or thereabouts um, with the final episode in this 40-day uh, challenge that we have been in. And so today is principle number nine principle of abundance for the day. I'm going to leave you with this principle of abundance and I'm going to see you tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern time for the final, the final uh, episode in this for, for right now. <laughs> hey, Lynn, buddy the vortex, buddy the vortex, buddy the vortex, woo woo. Now I have something to tell you before I go. Next week on April 4th, on 4-4, which is 8 Eight, the number of abundance, infinite abundance. I am starting a program with an elect few group of people. I want you to go to ValerieLove.com forward slash money because I am doing a program with just a very select group of people where I am going to walk you through. It's a 12 week program. I am going to walk you through the complete setup of your five figure business the way I do it, how I do it. I'm gonna show you all the behind the scenes stuff. It's called, and it's 12 portals that we will be going through. It's called Money Magic, and I am so proud of this. Oh my God, I'm so proud of this. It starts on 4-4, and I have some big goodies and a lot of things that I'm going to be giving to you as you come, as we go through this for 12 weeks. Then, if you decide that you want to be a Money Magic certified as a Money Magic coach, uh, I'll do a certification as well. And in the certification, you are going to be able, rather than coming up with your own coaching program, you're going to receive a license of doing the 12 portals with your people. You can walk people through the 12 portals. See, these 12 portals are so critical because these 12 portals include branding and it includes social media and how you show up on social media. It includes how you actually convert people to buying what you have. How, see, what I notice is a big issue with a lot of people. A lot of people are able to make money, yet they're not making money doing what they love. 
That's the only kind of money I make. You see money, people throw money at me every day. The only money I make is money doing what I love, money that is on sole purpose for me. And that is what I'm teaching in this class. I'm so happy, 12 week coaching program. And ever since the Destiny Coaching Academy where we used to certify coaches, I haven't certified coaches in quite a while yet, it is necessary. There are so many people that want to break free from having to go to a job or having to drive Uber or Lyft, <coughs> pardon me, or having to do something that they don't love to do just to get money. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. If you knew how to create money from in here, doing what you love, then you would do that, wouldn't you? That's what I'm teaching. I, I regard it as the great love of my life. And they say, if you love what you do, you never have to work a day in your life. And I'm giving some special gifts to the first up 10 people who registered. And the price is going to double. It's a dirt cheap price right now. The price is going to double soon. So hop in is ValerieLove.com money. Yes, right, Aurora Day, because so many people have seen this with so many people around them thinking, why are people driving Uber? Why are they driving Lyft? Why are they um, doing DoorDash? Why are they doing any of those things? And they've got to do it like all day. Like, you know, you talk to some people and they're on it all day to like 7 p.m. trying to make ends meet. They got to drive for eight hours a day. And I'm thinking, that's a job. And why? Because you haven't yet learned, right? Have uh, help pay their car notes. Yeah, yeah. They haven't yet learned how to make money on demand doing what you love. That's all I do. That's all I do. That is all I do. I do not make money doing things I do not love. I don't, and I don't think anyone should. You're not on the planet to suffer. You're not on the planet to uh, struggle. You're not on the planet. I'm sitting in paradise. I got a beautiful luxury apartment. I mean, there's many places. Look, if I taught you how to make even $5,000 a month doing what you love, because there's a system for it and there's many traps in it, you know, people run around and they get on all these webinars and it still doesn't give them the answer. I'm walking you through it, 12 weeks. If you made $5,000 a month, how many places could you go on the planet and live like a king or queen on $5,000 a month? You could live on like a queen or king or queen on $5,000 a month in parts of Mexico and parts of Bali and parts of Malaysia, Philippines. There's a lot of places. You don't have to stay where you are. See, this is total life restructuring that I'm talking about right now, okay? So I want you to just go to ValerieLove.com forward slash money. And if you know anyone who is like struggling or they're, they're, you know, or not so much struggling, perhaps they are making money. So they're not struggling, they are making money. They just don't like how they're making the money. They gotta do things they don't enjoy to make the money. Everybody makes money, because of course you have to make money to do the things in life that you want to do. They don't love the way they're making money, and they know that they are not making money doing what they love and what they were born to do. I think it's just best to make money doing what you were born to do, right? Definitely can live in the south of France for five months. Come on, Aurora Day. Hello. That's my kind of lady right there. I'm telling you, Aurora Day. I mean, south of France. Look at all the beautiful, there's parts of Italy you could probably live in. Italy is incredibly reasonably priced. Tuscany, you can live in the hills of Tuscany. They have the $1.75 latte in the morning, not like uh, Miami. That'll be $8.99, please, for an oat milk latte. Yes, $9 for an oat milk latte all day long. And if you're watching this in the year 2050 and you think $9, wow, that was cheap for an oat milk latte. 
I'm speaking this in the year of 2024 because I have videos that are more than a decade on, on YouTube. So I don't know when you may be watching this. <laughs> Reverend Valerie Love is a master teacher. Oh, and money badging. I'm a satisfied client. Yay! I love it. Cheryl, you are doing so amazing building your empire. I love it. I love it. So I love seeing all of these people that I've gotten to help, like get off them stinking jobs. And well, Cheryl wasn't on a stinking job. She was already retired, living a happy life, right? And now growing wealth even more, growing income, growing an empire, right? So I love teaching that. Oh my goodness, I love teaching it. So go to ValerieLove.com forward slash money. And we're going to start next week. We're going to start on 4-4, 2024. So yeah, you could live in Bali. You could live in, you could live in Kenya. You could live in, when I was in Kenya, now I know this was a long time ago. Even still, when I was in Kenya, there were apartments that were $60 a month. I know that was a long time ago, so okay, maybe they're 200 a month now. $60 a month? You don't have to be trying to run on a treadmill to pay a $3,000 a month house note. When you could be living on an entire $3,000 a month somewhere with a butler and a maid and a gardener, maybe somewhere in... Uh, um, southern parts of Africa where you could live like that. You could live like that in some parts of Ghana. There's lots of places, lots of places on the planet where you could live a wonderful life. Doing what you, and you would be much happier, much healthier, much more energetic, much more youthful, much more connected to nature. You know, I love my trees and all my plants and all this that's around me. I love all that. Yeah. Yeah, it's just that people don't know how to do it, right? They don't know how to do it. That's all. They just don't know how to do it. So that's what I'm here to teach you. I'm here to give you the exact steps. So you know what I love about Money Magic? See, you go to some programs and they just teach you magic. Well, that's only part of it. Because then what do I actually do? Then you go to some programs and they only teach you Facebook ads. Okay, well that's only part of it. What about the magic behind my Facebook ads? Then you go to some programs and they only give you just the coaching piece. They just teach you how to coach. But then how do I get clients? How do I charge the clients? How do I create a program? We're doing all of this. This is the most comprehensive 12 week program. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. The few people I'm looking for really just a few really good ones. The few people who get into this program are gonna do so well and I'm going to work with you to build just, you can make as much money as you want and in the beginning. And of course I teach high ticket because I don't like cheap things and I don't think you do either, right? I like things that are pricey and I would offer that you be expensive. One of the best compliments I ever got, I was at the, pardon me, National Speakers Association, and there was a speaker there, he was super famous, and he said to me, he was walking down the, down the um, hallway, and I was at the conference with this outfit on and this big designer bag and whatnot, and he said, you look expensive. And I was like, thank you. Like, that was a phenomenal, Look expensive, be expensive, do expensive things, go to expensive places. And when I say expensive, I don't mean it has to cost a huge amount of money. I mean high quality, high quality and be expensive. Principle number nine, tomorrow is principle number 10. And it is day 40, it is the final day of our daily conversations that you and I having together. Now coming up sometime next week, I'm gonna see if I can get this video edited and ready for y'all, will be my tour of my new apartment that I have here in Mexico. It's a nice, cute little apartment. And I'm also going to give you the story of my house and what I did with my house here in Mexico. And I'm also going to give you tours of the other apartments that I went to, all brand new. All of them are brand new construction, all of them and they started at $500 a month. I'm gonna show you, I went to four and I filmed them all for you. 
and then I'll let you guess which one I picked. And um, yeah, it's just inspiration. It's inspiration. So here's principle number nine. When I'm aware of the God self within me as my total fulfillment, isn't that the truth? I am totally fulfilled. I am now aware of this truth. I have found the secret of life. And I relax in the knowledge that the activity of divine abundance is eternally operating in my life. We've got to really understand that this infinite abundance, it's more than just money. It's wisdom, it's relationships, it's health, it's energy, it's clothing, it's ideas for prospering. It's all of that. It's everything. For me, it's a beautiful new pair of earrings. It's a new cute outfit. It's makeup on sale at Sephora, right? I simply have to be aware of the flow, the radiation of that creative energy. See, we want to be in the flow family. The creative energy, which is continuously, easily, and effortlessly pouring forth from my divine consciousness, I am now aware, I am now in the flow. So you've got to ask yourself, am I in the flow of divine abundance? Am I even doing what I was born to do? Am I in the flow of my gifts? I want you to go to ValerieLove.com forward slash money. And I want you to look at the 12 portals. And I want you to ask yourself, just use the 12 portals to gauge where you are. And ask, am I doing this? You don't have to sign up for the program. You sign up for it. You know, who's going to sign up for it is going to sign up for it. It's going to be perfect for them. Ask yourself, look at the 12 portals and see, are these 12 portals? Because this is a complete system. In each of the portals, we work with another entity and we work with a passage that's going to be used in our spell work. And we start with Dambala. <laughs> I love Dambala. And if you don't know who Dambala is, you'll learn. Week one. Week one, you will learn about Dambala. Dambala. Okay, so, yeah, just ask yourself, am I making, am I in the flow of doing what I love for money? Does all my money come to me from love? Is all my money love money? And if it's not, you need this program. If it is, congratulations. Because creating love money is not easy sometimes because in our consciousness, we think we can't do it, right? We think we can't do it. You are deceived and need to repent. Oh, Jesus is God. His word was left to learn from. Oh, okay. Everybody just send some love to C and C V. Just send some love. I don't know what to tell you. I, I love you. That's that's all I can say. I'm a minister and I'm about love. And no matter what people say to me or call me or, you know, say about what I say, I have the proof and the receipts and the evidence and they have dogma. They have doctrine. They have what they've been told. And I was there. I used to I used to be there. I used to be holy roller, Bible thumping holy roller. And you know what it is too? When you upset people's faith, it, it, it's, it's disconcerting. It's difficult. It's difficult for people. When you upset the apple cart and tell people that what they believe is lies and it's not, you know, up until 200 years ago, we thought the Bible was the oldest book on the planet, and now we know it's not. Archaeology, we have carbon dating. Now we know, okay, this is 10,000 years old and this is 5,000 years old. Like that's science. Yet dogma, doctrine, and people being mental slaves and people being absolutely hoodwinked. I feel bad for people, I really do. And because I was hoodwinked too, I'm telling you, I'm not trying to be funny. I feel bad for people because people really think Jesus is the savior. They really believe the bullshit story of Christianity that because a woman ate a piece of fruit in a garden. There is this, there's someone I want y'all to, to, to follow and look at. Have y'all ever heard of this um, gentleman on TikTok? 
He is hilarious. I think his name is Kyle, K-Y-L-E, underscore speaks or talks. One of those, Kyle talks or Kyle speaks. I think his, I know his name is Kyle. And he has this show on TikTok called The Stupid Shit I Used to Believe as a Christian. Oh my goodness, the thing is hilarious. The thing is hilarious. He's like, I used to believe that a virgin had a baby. Now that's some stupid shit. I mean, he goes in. You know, these are not truths. Some of it is metaphor. Some of it is ancient mythology. I love it all. Some of the Bible is astrology. Why do we keep having 12, 12, 12, 12? Hey, Linda, how you loving? Um, the Emerald Tablet is older than the Bible. Come on. See, Calvin's comments, you can tell from Calvin's comments. Calvin is so deep. Oh, <laughs> Joshua. <laughs> Joshua, you got it. Joshua says, CNC, you're on the wrong channel. <laughs> sums it up Joshua right there oh my god I be cracking up that's why I love my love tubers like go go to another part of YouTube it's it's like you walk into a room and YouTube and you look around and people are talking about ancient aliens and mysticism and magic and the occult and Jesus is Dionysus and Apollo and all these things <laughs> you're like oops I, I happened into the wrong part of YouTube <laughs> like in this channel anything is possible anything is possible I do not you know I don't discount anything anything could have happened <laughs> thank you Calvin CNC was uh sending love to those who are being unloving that's all we can do right that's all we can do because uh, Terrence McKenna said Adam and Eve was the world's first drug <laughs> You cracking up with <laughs> Oh, that is hilarious. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh, Calvin, I freaking love me some Terrence McKenna. He talks about taking a heroic dose of shrooms, and that's five grams, baby, a heroic dose. Yeah, you take a heroic dose of shrooms, all the scales will fall from your eyes, and you will see that all of it is a myth. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, family. I love y'all, and I love it. Oh my goodness, Aurora Dance, they're hilarious, man. You know, so when the Christians come to this part of YouTube and they walk in our room, hey, love tubers, we're in here talking. About they're like, Jesus is Lord. Well, maybe not. <laughs> Hey, maybe Dionysus is Lord. <laughs> maybe Apollo is Lord. <laughs> uh, these Christians have me cracking up, baby. But you know they want to hold on to the story. But here's here's the bottom line of what I want to say before I close up this this uh this chat. Can y'all still hear me? <laughs> I'm just making sure the sound is still. Good. <laughs> I'm over here cracking up. Here's what I want to say. It is easier to believe what you have been taught than to go on your own hero's quest and find out the truth. It's easier. It just is. It's easier just to be, what do I believe? And just let them spoon feed you. Okay, I'm good, thank you. It, it, it's easier. It's actually harder to do what we're doing, deconstructing. What do I believe? Looking at our consciousness, looking at ancient stories, looking at the mythologies of the world, uh, doing research, challenging ourselves, coming out of dogma, waking up. Waking up is actually probably more painful than staying asleep. So for people that are not there, I can't blame them because what we do is not easy. This stuff is not easy. So I can't, I can't blame them. It's easier, just go to church and 
Jesus is Lord. Jesus is woo. I'm gonna bow shot. Jesus is Lord. Woo. That feels good. Okay, let's ready for some fried fish. No, I think we're gonna have some fried chicken. Okay, eat your fried chicken, watch Netflix, go to sleep, wake up in the morning, go to work. That's your whole life. And you don't need anybody to come along like Reverend Valerie Love, upset your apple card, Aurora Day, Calvin, right? Uh, Calvin, Aurora Day, all of y'all amazing people here. <laughs> Joshua, all of y'all amazing people here, come and go upset the apple cart by telling you that what you believe is not true. People don't have to listen to me. Yet, there are people that are thinking like me, and I so appreciate you. I so appreciate you because I didn't want to stay with the scales on my eyes. I did not want to keep believing something. I didn't want to keep having all these questions that no one could answer. I was like, okay, I got to get out of here because these people are not answering my questions. I have a lot of questions. I want to know the secrets of the universe. Do you remember that scene? I promise y'all, this is the last thing I'm going to say and then we're going to go. Do y'all remember that scene in Men in Black when Kay, was Kay the, the, the older gentleman who was the, who was the mentor to Will Smith, Q? Was he Q or K? Okay, so the older one, the Tommy, Tommy Lee Jones character, was he K or was he Q? They all had a little, just a, one initial. Remember, they all had just one initial? Well, the older one said to, um, said to the Will Smith character, come over to my house because we got a, you know, something to happen at headquarters. And so they couldn't go to headquarters. And so they went to Tommy Lee Jones' house. And then he opened this big wall. Do y'all remember? And he had all these armaments in there. And Q, the Will Smith character was like, what are you doing with all this stuff? Like his mind was blown. Like how is his mentor got all this stuff in his house? Like he couldn't believe it, right? And he said, I promised you the secrets of the universe and nothing more. And Will Smith looked like, what, what, what more is there? That's me. See, the Will Smith character was trying to figure it out and kept learning more. And his mentor character said, I promised you the secrets of the universe and nothing more. And was looking around like, well, that means there's more. That means there's more than the secrets of the universe. I, that's what I wanted out. Inquiring minds want to know. Okay, <laughs> inquiring minds want to know. It's like Plato's allegory. Isn't it just Plato's allegory of the cave? Yes, we freed ourselves of the cave, but the other prisoner, that's right, still want to be in the cave. That's right, because it's all they know and they are scared to go out of the cave. Absolutely so. So, Gypsy Soul, the Tommy Lee Jones character, was K. Yeah, Kay told him, I promise you the secrets of the universe and nothing more. So that means there's more. <laughs> Can I know about it? <laughs> yeah, that's what we want around here. And everything I learn, I share. All right, family, so I love you and I will see you tomorrow. And in the meantime, I want you to go to ValerieLove.com forward slash money because I think people are already signing up for the money. I love it, love it, love it. Peace, Casey out. Love you, love you, love you.